the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. But I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to future those, who, to take those who take it. So welcome, Sky. It's great to be with you here today. Um, Thank you. I thought we'd start the conversation just by learning about you. Um, tell us your, uh, tell us who you are, and and then we'll go from there. Yeah. So I'm Sky Christofferson, Olympic athlete and world record holder, and was so excited to be here today at this Wearable Tech New York. Yeah. Here at the World Trade Center on the top of the world. The view doesn't get better. Unbelievable. Right? Yeah. yeah. In this community, we have some of the, the leaders, you know, in healthcare innovation, wearable technology, digital health, and I was here just really to thank this community for helping the U.S. Olympic team before the, the last Olympics with a lot of the same technology to help athletes prepare using data and not drugs. I, I, yeah, I want to dig into that because um, how, how is technology, how is digital, uh, new digital tools, how is it impacting how athletes are training? Yeah, so this kind of wearable technology called the quantified self, right. you know, tracking, is changing the way athletes prepare. Uh, typically, you would be sort of forced through a template. And what this data enables us to do is to understand how each athlete is responding as a unique individual. Right, and this, I think the same thing is happening in healthcare, the shift to individualization, and we're seeing that now in, in sport. And it's exciting because drugs were used as kind of a patch mm. to cover the, I guess, the lack of ability to understand these individual differences. And now we're finally able to, to fine tune them like we really never could before. So is, are, are you saying that data is actually helping, it's almost more powerful than drugs to a certain extent? I think data is more powerful than drugs. Uh, sustainability is, is really the, the, the key concept here, right? Because yes, drugs work great, you can inject testosterone, you know, you're going to gain lots of lean muscle, but over what time frame? You know, because then your testicles shrink and, right. you know, it throws your body smart and it's always going to adjust. And over the long run, I think you're, you're always going to win out if you can, you can train your body how to do this naturally. And with this data, we're closing the feedback loops and seeing what natural factors are really uh, contributing to, to our performance in this way. So uh, as an Olympian, what, what sort of tools are athletes using today? Are, are they tracking devices? Are they special sensors? What, what sort of tools are, are people using yes. in the field? So in, in Olympic and elite sport, you know, we've been tracking forever, right? Like the second the heart rate monitor came out, we were, we were using that. The, you know, the stopwatch came out, we were using that, those numbers. And now it's all of this wearable technology is enabling, enabling us to get new kinds of data mm. about our bodies. Mm. Uh, an example is in sleep. Sleep is one of the most powerful ways to release these hormones naturally. And if you can imp improve deep sleep, and, and an example I gave during the presentation was seeing the, the women's cycling team that when their rooms were a cooler temperature, they were getting better deep sleep and they were performing better the next day. Wow. So the intervention was drop the temperature of the bedrooms with a, a mattress topper uh, to give them better deep sleep. Remarkably simple intervention. Wow. Right? And it's probably across the whole spectrum of your life. So from sleep to eating to breathing to everything that you're doing to, to prepare and you know everything that's going on in your life? Yeah, yeah, I think this, this quantified self kind of model is, is opening up finally, I think, a whole picture of the human being, uh, of, of athletes. And we're looking at sleep, nutrition, training, and well-being. Hmm. And we have now have data in all of these areas. So we can kind of put a data model together of the, the person. 
And the exciting thing about these tools is that so many of them are commercially available. And sports science used to be this high-end, expensive, right. you know, laboratory-based thing. And now we're moving that out of the lab and onto the athlete. And a lot of these devices, you know, the MFIT uh, sleep sensor goes under the mattress, 300 bucks. Right. Uh, it's becoming affordable to the everyday uh, yes. prosumer, at least. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in a way, kind of democratizing performance, yes. right, at this consumer available, low, lower price point. Are you starting to see um, all athletes use this, so even in, in junior high and high school, or is it, are these types of tools really only being used by Olympians? Well, what we're seeing is that young kids, these digital natives, are very hungry for data. Mm. And a lot of the, you know, the high school football programs or whatever have not yet caught up. To, to, to utilize the, the data in the right way and to make meaning of it. Uh, but I, th I believe that uh, the youth is, is hungry for it. Mm. And that's going to be exciting too, because if you can see how important natural factors are, you know, even when you're 16 years old, right. rather than popping some pills that your buddy's like, hey, you right. know, dude, this is going to make you buffer, like take these. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be exciting. So tell us about O Athlete. Um, what, what is O Athlete and, and what's your mission there? Yeah, so O Athlete just was, began during the London 2012 Olympics when we had 19 advisors and 10 companies come together and really help us in a time of need before the Olympics, right? When Lance Armstrong and these guys were banned for drugs and this digital health community really came together to support this team. Mm -hmm. So we've since continued with a lot of these advisors, we, we call this O Athlete, uh, and there's an app that's distilling a lot of these things that we did and putting this into a, you know, a, a product that we hope to get on the market, not just for elite athletes, but for anyone wanting to improve their performance. Is it, so it's not on the market yet, it's something coming soon? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. And I know we're, you have- We're looking for investment. Okay. Yes. Well, well, maybe there's some investors out here that, that are interested. Where can people yes. learn more about o Athlete? Oathlete.com. Okay. Is, uh, That's easy. Website, yes. Go, uh, the Google works too, right? <laughs> um, so tell, tell us about, um, there's a new movie coming out, uh, big premiere, Personal Gold. Um, when's that coming out? And, and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this this story, you know, with the US women's cycling team using this wearable technology was actually captured uh, in a documentary film called wow. Personal Gold. And this is going to be broadcast around the Olympic Games and uh, just finished a film festival circuit. And we have a, a big company in Hollywood uh, is interested in doing a remake of this into a, you know, a real narrative film. Fantastic. So there's there's excitement, you know, around these kind of stories because we're seeing, yeah, the te technology is great, but what's the human impact? Mm -hmm. And this Personal Gold is an example of a, a very human story about how this is is transforming, you know, the way we're eating, sleeping, exercising, and kind of the potentials of that. And this is all relevant to everyone, not, not just athletes. It seems like everyone will be able to start to use these same tools and philosophies and, and mindsets in order to improve their health. Yeah, that, that's the cool thing is that, you know, sports science was usually just for the athletes. And what we're doing is actually taking a step back and we're looking at the human being, right? How they're sleeping, how their nutrition is. And this applies basically to anyone who eats and sleeps and As all of us. Yeah, yeah, all of us. So Cool. Yeah. So where are things going? Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on the future? Um, predictions for for where uh, the intersection I guess with some of these tools and technologies and in people's lives in say the next five to ten years yeah oh, what's the future hold the future I think is exciting right because we're on a vector and we can see well some of these technologies aren't quite there yet right there's definitely this this movement and that's going to go towards us getting you know more continuous uh, less invasive cheaper, easier to use, much more meaningful data about how we can improve our lives. You know, whether that's sleeping better, eating better, or getting better results out of our training, just like the Olympic athletes are. Fantastic. Um, so what, what do you do to, to stay healthy? Um, not just to train, but to stay healthy. To stay healthy, yes. Well, that's a, that's a good distinction you made, right? Because health is at the foundation of any good performance. And what 
you see with a lot of elite athletes is that they're actually not very healthy. Mm. They're performing really well, but they're not healthy. And that's what we did in this model that you see in Personal Gold and with O Athlete is um, in increasing the baseline health mm. uh, underneath that. So what do I do to stay healthy? Uh, so daily training is essential. Uh, Plant-based, very clean diet, lots of good lean protein. Uh, sleeping well, using some of these data-driven insights about you know cool bedroom, quiet, dark. So you can get good sleep. Getting that deep sleep, yeah, yeah, where your body's releasing you know testosterone and growth hormone naturally. And uh, yeah, these are these are some of the things that uh, create these. We call those these the pillars of health, right? Sleep, training, nutrition, and well-being. These are the pillars. This is what we focus on. What wonderful wisdom to share. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been yeah. a, a great pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah.